Right, uh, good morning or no, good afternoon. Uh, I did a talk last year about the same topic, so I will, uh, I will talk. And uh, we, uh, we did a bit more work, so we're a bit further, uh, further ahead. Uh, basically, what we're looking at is looking at the, uh, what are the, uh, the energy and, uh, and protein requirement for pre-wind lamps. So the first work we did a few years ago, we tried to re reassess what are the maintenance requirements both for energy and protein, as well as what are the energy requirements for growth and, uh, and protein. And then when you got those things, you can calculate how much energy you need for a given, at a given live weight for a given growth rate. You can do those calculations. And so that's what we did. And then you can look at what is the ratio between the protein requirement and the energy requirement to achieve some different growth rates at a different live weight. So what you can see is that if you go at 150 gram a day from birth to about 20 kg, this curve is coming down. The curve is the ratio between the protein and the energy requirement to sustain those performance. Also, if you have an animal who's going 300 grams a day, you get the same curve, but obviously you need more protein uh, per unit energy to sustain this increased growth. So what we see that it's high at the beginning and it's low at the end. Then if we look at what's happened when you're feeding lambs, you put them on a milk replacer, and your milk replacer gets a ratio about of 11, which is correspond to what is in the ewe milk. Also, you will put them, we feed them some pellets to match what's the grass. And the ratio of protein to energy in the pellets, it's about 15 something. So what we do, at the beginning, they just have milk. So that's what we feed them at the beginning. As they grow, they eat more and more grass or pellets. So what their intake in terms of protein to energy ratio go over this line. So if we look at this, we see that here, there is not enough protein per unit energy to sustain their maximal growth. We are in a deficit situation, and here we get too much protein per unit growth, and we know that grass has too much protein and it goes out. So bottom line is, is that the requirement goes like that, and what they're being fed goes the other way around. So there is only at one point here, this point, this point, this point, and this point that we're exactly where the, what the animal need. So we're out of pattern based on those theoretical calculations. So the next step, we say, now we want to find out what's happened if we keep some lambs, we rig them with high protein to ME ratio, or the normal one. So the normal one is our normal milk replacer and normal pellets. So we, uh, we formulate some, uh, some milk replacer and pellets, and they were iso -en uh, energetic, so we have the same amount of ME in each of those pellets and milk replacer, but one milk at about 24 crude protein, and the other one has 31% crude protein. And in all those trials we did, we, uh, we, we keep the, 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 the lambs in dog, we bottle feed them, we measure the intake of milk and pellets every day. At the end of the experiment, we slaughter them, and we do the total body composition. In the middle, we do some digestibility and metabolicity and, uh, and, uh, study. So we know what's coming, and what's came out and where, what's staying. So we can make a total balance of the nutrient flow in those, in those lamps. So what we found in, the, in this experiment where we had a, a, normal, or a normal milk replacer and a, a milk replacer with a higher protein to energy ratio, then of course we start them at the beginning, at the, beginning at the end because we slaughter them all around 19 kg because we start in September and it's coming close to Christmas so we don't want to go too long to get all of them. So we, we were, there was no difference in the live weight at the beginning and the end, but that's what we can expect. What we, thought, we saw that the one who were on this high milk, uh, this milk with high protein to energy ratio, grew about 30 grams faster a day. They were more efficient. They put more uh, gram per, uh, they put more weight per kilo dry matter than intake than the one on the normal milk. Also, but there was a cost. The cost was, you had, as you had this milk and more protein, you were, putting more, you were putting more protein in those animals. And then, if you look at the cost of those type of milk, it's, quite, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more expensive. But what was really interesting 
is that if we, as we had the whole body composition, we were able to calculate what is the protein deposition per day and what is the fat deposition per day. And what we can see is that the one where the high milk, high protein to energy ratio milk put about six grams more protein per day and they, they are about seven grams less fat. So those animals were growing faster and leaner. Therefore, they grow faster. Because each time you put one gram protein in the muscle, you put three, three grams of water, so that's sheep to grow. If it's fat, you put one gram of fat and a tiny bit of water in the muscle. So in terms of growth, it's less efficient. So the problem we had there, where should I point? Oh, wasn't a problem. So we, we were also able to, uh, to look at here the, uh, the protein deposition, how many gram protein an animal is depositing per day. And we can see, as they were on different milk and different pellets, that sort of different intake, intake of protein and energy, and therefore they were, the, re the resulting for protein to energy ratio for each them was changing. But what we saw is there's sort of an increase in the response in the protein deposition until you got to sort of a maximum there. That's a maximum protein deposition. And this maximum protein deposition may be due to the gen different genotype. In other species, it's well known that different genotypes have different maximum protein deposition potential. That should be also the case in, uh, for lambs. The thing we did in the first this experiment, we, uh, have one, we had one milk who was always at high energy to protein ratio and one which was at the normal one really low. That's all those two groups. But if we look at the requirement, the requirement said, has to come high at the beginning and go low towards the end. So that's the next experiment we plan. We say we want to keep them some on the high level all the time, the normal level, and some of those we will adjust the milk composition as the animal is growing. And so what we did, we had uh, 28 Romney lambs, male, we did give them some normal pellets, we had, uh, there were one group as the normal milk replacer, one group had the high milk, the milk uh, with the high protein to energy ratio all the time. And the last group, we, are, we were sort of blending the milk as the animal is growing and we're adjusting the energy to protein ratio in the milk fed those animals every three days based on their live weight and a theoretical growth of 300 grams a day. Then, we, in this case, we, uh, we start a bit earlier, so we, we got them up to 20 kilo live weight. Here again, we measure all the intake and the, and the weight and get the whole body composition. So if we look what's happened with those three groups, one group at the normal milk, one group at the milk with the high protein to energy ratio, and the middle group there, that's the group where we, every three days we, uh, we started at 14 something and we came down to, the, to, to 11. We started at this level of energy to protein ratio and came down there in adjusting it. So what we see again, there was no big, di there was no difference in weight because we sort of went for, uh, we slaughtered them at a given live weight and they started at the same weight at the beginning. But again, interestingly, is that between the normal milk and the high milk, last time we had about 30 gram increase, we get the same amount of increase this time. So we repeat what we did in the previous one. But we had the, the one we were eating, where we're adjusting the milk all the time, the, the, the energy to protein ratio in the milk, we had the same level of performance like the high one. And we, there was, but having this one, we had a better feed efficiency. Also, we were using less protein. So between this, this the normal milk and the mixed milk, it's an increase of uh, about, uh, what is it, five gram, no, yeah, five gram protein per day but we had a 30 gram response in growth rate in adjusting this, uh, this ratio. Energy was, uh, there was no difference in energy intake and uh, the total protein is increasing with the, taking into account the pellet intake and it seems that the one in the, with the mixed meat has sort of a slightly higher pellet intake. So it seems to, uh, to that if we adjust the, the, the protein to ME ratio in the milk replacer that to match the lamb requirement, like babies, you know, babies, they get a formula number one, two, and three, and four because the requirements are changing. Then we can, that will result in animal who are growing faster. And the cost of uh, producing these uh, extra protein just at the beginning uh, may balance out by the, fast, the fact that those animals are growing faster and are leaner. 
So that's where we are at at the moment. For the last experiment, I don't have the body composition data. We, we get the carcasses, but it's still uh, have to analyze all those uh, body composition before uh, find out what was the protein deposition and uh, the fat deposition in those three different uh, treatment groups. So it's all good, but it's, it is always the case. Maybe not. I'm a pig person, and in the in pigs, it's well known that uh, well, we don't look at protein, we look at amino acid, we, so we use lysine as a proxy for the, the protein in the diet, and we don't use amy. Is that finished? No, no. Three, three minutes. Oh, three minutes. Okay. Oh, so plenty of time. Uh, so we use the energy ratio. But if you see this, for example, for this one, as the pig is growing, you get the same pattern. The energy, the, 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 the amount of protein or lysine per energy is coming down. And that's for one genotype. Another genotype, it's about the same, but there's a flat face there. If we look at another type of genotype, it's flat and goes down, and another genotype is completely flat all the time. So, and that's, those, the dark li those lines there is to feed animals to their maximum lean growth. So obviously, we get in the lamb as well, we look at so far, we're in this sort of situation, but is it always the case? Because it may depend on what type of genotype we're dealing with uh, in our lambs. And that's it. Thank you.